Gels are probably my second favorite pen type, topped only by the fountain pen, which is more of a hassle to use in comparison. And this comes from someone who has a portable inkwell in his EDC. The best is not always practical. For the non connoisseurs it's pretty much a rollerball. But gels use pigments rather than dyes, and the ink is suspended in a water-based gel. But I'll skip the technicals like melting point viscosity. What matters is they don't fade, are water resistant, very smooth, consistent, and take no effort to write with. Alas, nothing's perfect. Most of them end way too fast. Ink flows like a river. Obviously, there are exceptions, like this Mi High Capacity ink pen, literally in the name. And yes, it's made by that phone company, Xiaomi. Well, they do a lot more than just phones, investing like 5 billion into more than 300 companies, bringing high quality goods, often at razor thin margins. As for these pens, first of all, you're getting a 10 pack for $6, each claiming to write 1,600 meters, which is good for 180,000 characters. I guess it's time to introduce myself. Huh. Name is Alex, and I like to test and review stuff, close and personal. You see, most reviewers don't actually use the products, or even worse, sell out. I don't know, take screen bars for example. Ooh, look at this fancy package. Ah, it turns on. But does it actually fulfill its purpose? After watching over a hundred videos, I have yet to find someone who would actually test them, as brands often make highly selective often misleading claims. We as reviewers should be the bulwark against the deception, the guiding light for consumers. So yeah, let's test it. I've seen such videos where people draw lines or worse, fill out the whole page. I mean, sure, looks cool, but how on earth are you gonna measure it? So I opted for squares on half centimeter graph paper, making eight lines per square. Count how many squares fit horizontally, 60 and vertically 20. Multiply to find out we have 320 squares per page. That equals 1280 centimeters. And then I just have to count the pages. Easier said than done. Trust me. Never have I thought it would take around half an hour per page, having to constantly check the camera. And the hot, blinding lights don't help either. I pretty much spent every single free moment that I was awake or mostly awake, doing square after square, page after page, as I really like the minimalistic frosted seafood look, grip and comfort were high on my concern list. But even five hours into writing, his palms are sweaty, mom's spaghetti, it felt solid as rock, and I would probably continue writing even more, but I got distracted by two missiles that hit close to my home. These are actually parts of that rocket. Really hits different, seeing it on the television, compared to your backyard. So, I guess I do have an excuse for not posting more frequently. But back to the review. To my delight, I didn't get a writer's callus, and I was pressing really, really hard in order to test the bullhead, as well as a topic for a new video, as I get them pretty often. And as some reviews mention, it is indeed on the scratchy side, at least if you're trying to make a braille book taking out all the anger and frustration on the pen. I guess I should mention that 20 pages into the torture, it started to skip on the fourth segment of the square when writing uninterruptedly, taking the pen out the paper or not pressing as if you're trying to stab someone alleviates this. I mean, that's the whole beauty of gel pens and why so many pick them. You don't need all that pressure you usually have to put on a ballpoint. For me, it achieved perfect balance. Sure, there are more wet pens, but you're risking smudging, something I experienced firsthand. I mean, I just had to test how it compares to generics. Call me crazy, but I also picked up one of those common big pens which promises 2 kilometers of writing. And you guessed it, I tested it out. But back to smudging. I did a lot of testing, I really did, and don't worry, it's recycled. As it's pretty important for lefties, as well as anyone like me who uses a notebook. When bullets fly, you don't have time to watch ink dry, but you really have to research and take into consideration the paper you're writing on, as even a regular copy paper is a lot more nuanced than one might have thought. Look at that, just a lovely coloring. 
tasteful thickness of it. Oh my god. And this is a hard one. Sometimes it dries almost instantly. Sometimes you need to wait for 5 or more seconds. Rhodia, which is known for its smooth paper, needs a little bit more. But to my surprise, even if you close the notebook, it doesn't smudge whatsoever. The pen sometimes seems to leave tiny blobs of ink, which you can't even see unless super magnified. But they dry out fairly quick, otherwise it's pretty instant. So I'm a little confused. Obviously I can't call it an instant dryer, and I have used pens that dry fully faster. But it's not bad either, lest you're a left-handed sonic, then you should look for more absorbing paper or another pen altogether. As for righties, the biggest peril is highlighter performance. At least that's the only thing that came into my mind. I tested cheap and brand name highlighters, water and alcohol based, in what I think are pretty realistic use case scenarios. As for the results, well, you're literally looking at them. Since I want to show more testing, but this voiceover segment is finished, I'll use the time to ask you to like, comment and subscribe. Yeah, I know, anyway. But YouTube needs to see user interaction in order to promote the content. And adults, unlike kids, rarely do. So I'd really appreciate it. Bleed through is not usually a problem. Show through might. Well, here's how the backside looks. And putting it on guidelines gives perfect results. For some reason, big cheap notepads are not common in Ukraine. Most use these things called Zoshet. You're forced to have one per subject. Can't put it in a binder, more fragile, harder to photocopy, or these more expensive book style. So I just printed line guides as copy paper is so much more affordable and convenient. So I'm just curious, what do your countrymen use in college and universities or it's all digital now? You're probably familiar with these swirlies and pen reviews. If not, they're just a quick way to imitate pen usage. When you're in a store or at a convention, you don't have the time to write that much, do you? But when you already invested multiple days into a pen review, what's another half an hour? And obviously, this is a new pen not the one I used for squares. In fact, I fully tested all 9 of them, just to see if there are any differences from one to another. And to no surprise, they all behave in the same way. Even their weight is very close one to another. And I guess I should throw in the dimensions while I'm at it. The line thickness, 0.5, is pretty thin. Here's millimeter graph paper. More tests. Mistakes happen. We are only human, and this gel pen is perfect for correction tape, as you can lightly write on top. Then there is correction fluid. Personally, I just cross things out and write random letters, but I know people use it. Yes, you have to wait a little bit, but it's actually pretty good. But even if you don't, it won't destroy the pen. Almost at the finish line, and I hope I didn't miss anything, as this is my first ever pen review in any format. Before we go any further, Write in the comments, do you think they delivered? Did Xiaomi really write 1.6? Did Big do too? Xiaomi proved to be very consistent, almost to the very end. Same line thickness and color, excellent performance, even when writing in bad, or using your knee as a writing surface. I tried all sorts of grips and pressure, from light as a feather to literally tearing up the paper. So when you're this close to the end, how long will it last? On the last stretch? All the pens seem to last longer, and all of them experienced some issues, needed to be shaked, watered, or left alone. Skipping started at around page 68, and the pen played dead at 69, so I wouldn't really count on it during an exam. But it's also not a reason to throw it away either, as it kicked almost until the end of 74. Right now, you're watching the very last moments of the pen. Its condition deteriorated quickly within the last page, being filled with suffering and needed to be watered, the line broke and it couldn't go on on its own. A moment of silence is in order. But despite the tragedy, it didn't fulfill its promise. But these claims usually carry a fine print, saying something along the lines of ideal circumstances, with no gravity on the North Pole and writing on gold tablets. That's why I picked two other pens to test and compare. So what about the generic pen with no promises? I picked a whole bunch of these in Aoshan on sale. They are a lot more wet in comparison, but showed fluctuations in color and thickness towards the end. And I would indeed need to buy more than four to match Xiaomi, which is pretty insane. The big pens have been around since the 50s and are credited with making the ballpoint pen a success. 
it's affordable, it's everywhere. With its 2 km claim, I just had to test it. But after gel pens, it sure was hard to switch. You really feel the difference. For some reason, the color changed midway, and like others, it had issues towards the end. I even had to leave it sit for a day before it started to write again. I didn't really put any extra pressure as you already had to put more, so it didn't get an extreme treatment like the knee. And still, in the end, yes, show me one. And while it also under delivered, it outright smashed the competitor, which boosted a lot more than they did. The square method is not ideal and leaves room for error, but I double check using a curvimeter, an instrument used on maps to measure distance, just to confirm it's insignificant. All in all, you're getting tremendous value. Too bad they only seem to sell in red and black. I would really want to see at least blue. Like, subscribe and comment. More stationary reviews are in the works.